Hey everybody, I'm Rosemary and thanks for tuning in. This is the first in a series of videos where I'll be sharing some of my audio and music production tips. Thanks to everyone who shared some topic suggestions. I'm super excited to kick this series off. So this video is going to be a little bit about some mixing basics in Ableton using an instrumental track. My musical example today is a video from my Instagram. <laughs> So let me show you my Ableton session real quick. I've got my drums all grouped together and I'm actually using a Zach Burns drum break. Shout out to Zach. I converted it to MIDI so I can use my own samples, but I still left it in there. Two kicks, mostly percussion. Uh, I have this bass sample which Itamar recorded on my Nord Stage 2 EX and then I have two other Nord tracks with some Nick Samrod patches. First of all, let's talk about EQ. EQ is a really great tool to cut out frequencies that kind of interfere with pronouncing the instrument's true color. So we can use EQ to get rid of frequencies and to boost frequencies in instruments that we really like. When you're using an EQ, you want to make sure that you're cutting before you're boosting. So we want to make sure we get rid of frequencies before we accentuate any. So let me start off with this Zach Burns drum break. I'm putting a high pass filter on it, so that means I'm just letting the higher frequencies through. I'm mostly using it for this like snare kind of sound, and so I don't want the kick in the drum break to interfere with the kick that I've added. Let's take a listen um, with and without this drum break. So it's quite subtle. You notice I have the volume down at negative seven, so it's not quite in the forefront, but it's just kind of adding a little flair to the samples that I have and make it sound more natural. Let's go to the kick. I have two different kicks here. One of them is for the higher frequency and one of them is for a lower frequency. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a low pass. So it's the opposite of our high pass filter. Instead of letting all the high frequencies through, we're letting all the low frequencies through. We don't really need what's going on up here. So I have it at about 1.9 kilohertz. I have my low pass filter here and let's see if there's any frequencies that we want to boost. Remember I'm using this one for more high frequency. Right there. All right, so now let's take a look at our kick number two. This one's for more punch. I think that's a good balance. We don't want to boost it too much. So really working with these frequencies so they don't get on top of each other. Now I also have some compression here on the kicks. Kind of allows for the kick to cut through the mix. So we have our drums EQ'd. Now, the bass and the kick drum relationship is definitely a little tricky to figure out. We want to make sure that the kick drum doesn't interfere with the bass and vice versa. So I have our bass track here, and I'm going to put a high pass filter on here, but I'm only going to take it up to about 70. We don't want to get rid of the actual, you know, bass tone. We don't want it too high. And you can see from that little graph there, there's a lot of frequencies going on, the harmonics. So we want to make sure we find the right harmonics to boost. I think that sounds cool. I'm not going to do much with these other synth parts. So we have everything EQ'd. The next step is to do some volume adjusting. So I already have a lot of volume adjusting here. Like I said, the Zach Burns drum break is quite low in the mix. It's just kind of more of a subtle hint. 
this percussion track is quite low in the mix as well. And we can listen to this drum track to see, make sure it's all cohesive. Nothing standing out too much, so I think it's a good blend. I also have stuff going to some reverb, this little plate from Sound Toys. And also Crystallizer for a nice little echo effect. I wouldn't recommend sending your kick to the reverb because it kind of makes everything sound a little bit muddy, um, especially in the low end. So we want to make sure we keep our kick out of the reverb. And even on here, usually you can, you can put an EQ on your reverb. So if we turn this down, that allows for the higher frequencies to come through in the reverb and take some of the low end possibly muddiness out of the reverb. This particular synth I wanted to be kind of more in the background so I turned it quite down. This acts more as the melody. So another thing I want you guys to experiment with is panning. I feel like panning is super underrated. It's a really good way to kind of allow for these instruments to live in different sonic spaces. We don't want our mix to be one or two dimensional. We want it to be three dimensional. Using panning is a really good trick for making sure that the instruments don't step over each other and it kind of creates more color in the mix. In the drum track, I have some panning here. Let's take a listen. Sounds pretty cool. I usually keep the kick in the middle since it's kind of like a grounding force. The bass I usually keep in the center. Another thing that I like to think about when I'm mixing is what instrument do I want to highlight? And for me, this bass track is so sick. The sound is amazing and the riff is really cool. So I really wanted to highlight this instrument in this song. So I keep it in the center and then I panned the other synths left and right. So the melody is more to the right and the more synth patty stuff is to the left. So let's take a listen. Cool. So I don't know about you, but I was really grooving to that. I hope this was even a little bit helpful to you. Feel free to reach out to me or comment below any questions you have about this particular video and if you have anything else you want me to cover. So I'll see you hopefully again soon with another video. Thanks.